Good morning, big girls. I love you. And I love the five players I'm going to be talking about in today's video. Now, five players whom I love drafting in fantasy this year. The list is not based off of like, this is great value and I like him according to ADP. This is just like fucking five dudes that I get juiced up, bricked up when I draft them on my team. Okay. Sometimes I overdraft them. Sometimes they fall to me at value. I just get abnormally hyped up. Maybe it's a bias thing. Maybe I've read too much into them. doesn't matter. We play fantasy football because sometimes we like to have fun in this economy, all right? And this is one of my outlets, and this is one of your guys' outlets. The reason I make so much fucking content about this because it's a way that I express myself, and sometimes my draft picks are a way of expressing myself. As weird as that might sound, these guys just get me jazzed up when I take them in fantasy drafts. So we could talk about the stats. We could talk about the numbers. We could talk about why they're such good values relative to the other rankings at their position and why in super flex versus full PPR, all that kind of shit. But I'm telling you, I just get juiced up when these guys get drafted on my fucking team. So without further ado, tuck them. Let's walk them. First guy up on this list, and this is someone that I feel like everybody gets hyped up to draft, and it is Anthony Richardson, the quarterback, the sophomore quarterback for the Indianapolis Colts, who we really only got to see play three, three and a half games for last year. But I'll tell you what, Shane Steichen, he's really like that. All right. Listen, he's going after like the elite quarterbacks in underdog drafts. He's like fifth, sixth round because the upside is crazy, I'm sure. And like friends and family leagues, you'll get him a little bit later. And he is like the perfect one quarterback quarterback because the upside is crazy and if it doesn't hit or he gets hurt or something you go look elsewhere but when I look at what we saw a little taste of what we saw last year according to FTN data Adam Fife shout out to you the Colts ran RPO 18.1 percent of the time the highest rate in the NFL the league average was around five percent that is like the perfect style of offense for Anthony Richardson to make quick easy throws to alleviate pressure from the defense to make things difficult for the defense and for him to run at a very 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 high rate when he runs at a high rate there tends to be a lot of fantasy points that follow so a rich is just like when you see him at the top of your lineup, how can you not possibly fucking pop a vein in your neck? I just don't understand how you function otherwise. When we start to look at the pace of their offense last year, Indianapolis had the single fastest pace in the NFL, 24 seconds per snap. It was over a full second faster than the next fastest team in the NFL, the Chargers last year. So Indy is moving. They are grooving. They are adding to this weapons group, Michael Pittman, Adonai Mitchell, Josh Downs. It is quite it is quite beautiful. They have a great ground game in Jonathan Taylor. Anthony Richardson, again, he got hurt in week four. And he also got hurt in week two, and he left the game for half the game. Guy had three passing touchdowns and four rushing touchdowns in three games. The fantasy production is insane. And I, it's not a, the hot take. I think the, the, the comparison has been made many times, but A. Rich for sure has that, like, Cam Newton type fantasy upside where you break the game. And before people are like, oh, he's he's a better version of Cam. Cam Newton put up like 400 fantasy points in his big MVP season. There's been like eight quarterbacks ever, five quarterbacks ever to do it. All right. And he did it in 16 games before all this like Josh Allen did it in 17 games type bullshit. All right. Cam Newton's fantasy season was one of the greatest of all time. All right. And a rich, if he could stay healthy and just do what he does, will likely put up one of the greatest fantasy seasons of all time at some point during his rookie contract. But if you have it this year, like, how can you not get hyped up? Yeah, I'm getting worked up about it because I'm excited. I got pit stains. It's fucking 95 degrees out here in New York City. I'm wearing a light green shirt. Not a great choice. But you know who is a great choice? The number two player up on this list. That's Devon Achan, the Miami Dolphins running back. You've heard me yap about him so much. He is quite literally lightning in a bottle. He's a dude where you're watching the NFL red zone on Sunday, and Scott Hansen's up there smiling. He goes, oh, breaking news. We got a big play out of the Miami Dolphins game down in South Beach. Them boys can run. And guess what? You turn on your television, it switches to the game, and before you know it, it's Achan taking the damn skin 80 yards to the crib. You just went from having zero fantasy points to 15 fantasy points like that, okay? I expect his workload to go up. When you look at what he really did last year, he was not a one-hit wonder. He didn't do it and get lucky. He wasn't a special type back. He wasn't a, you know, like a, a weapon or a gadget type player. I'll just leave this tweet up here from Tej Seth. He says, Devon Achan's ranks in terms of EPA per rush in different situations. There's a lot of ones up on that board. Just all rushing situations first in the NFL. Red zone first, early down first. Likely rush attempts, 14th. Five, six players box, 
third, seven player box first, eight player box first, zone concepts first, duo concepts sixth, gap concepts second. His efficiency would obviously regress towards the mean, but with more volume, he was very good in just about every situation last year. Correct. He is a good player, and good players tend to just be good in situations where they are relied upon. So I fucking love Devon Achan, and I think we're in for a massive, massive year from him. Number three, this guy has, has slowly crept up my like really, really juiced up list of, of guys to add and I feel like I'm going to regret this but it's Cooper Cup the wide receiver for the Los Angeles Rams now when you use the ADP up on the screen right now you could see he's kind of all over the place underdog has him high up uh, the 31st pick overall so you're getting him in the mid third round but when you look at the more you know friendly type league setting CBS ESPN FFPC uh, those kind of leagues Yahoo you're getting him deep into the fourth round pretty much, okay? So when you can get Cooper Cup in the fourth round, when you're talking about a dude who, even on a down year, coming into the year with massive injuries, he was a huge red flag coming into the year. Anytime you get that type of injury, the lingering muscle hamstring injury, tendon injury uh, late in the summer, like you're an easy stay away guy. He got hurt, but he still put up big, big, big numbers over the second half of the year. He still had individual games with really high ceiling. Uh, do I think he's the number one there? Probably unlikely. I mean, Puka's young. He's explosive. He was fucking phenomenal. And there's nothing you could take away other than that from last year. But I will say, even if Cooper Cup is like on the decline talent wise, which I, I don't think I fully buy into, uh, the way that this offense is set up, they don't rely on him to be this unbelievable separator and this like specimen of a talent like Julio Jones, where if you can't do what you did when you were 25, you're useless to us kind of thing. Cooper Cup and, and Sean McVay's offense with such good chemistry out there, him and him and Matt Stafford together, like I still think even in a bad season in this upcoming season, if he stays healthy, we're looking at a top 20, top 15 wide receiver that you're getting for like an insane value where Cooper Cup will probably still likely throw you up a couple like 150 yard receiving game so we love we love we love cooper cup i also love isaiah pacheco the running back out of kansas city i've also yapped about him quite a bit but i just don't think people understand how good he was when jarek mckinnon was out last year and jarek mckinnon will be out for this entire year because he's no longer a kansas city chief it is literally just pacheco and clyde edwards hilaire and they proved down the stretch last year how much they wanted to rely on pacheco this dude was averaging like 23 opportunities per game he was averaging almost 20 ppr fantasy points per game his receptions were going up his touchdown scoring ability is incredible like he was on pace for 15 1600 yards from scrimmage and about 15 touchdowns in a patrick mahomes kansas city offense i don't understand why that just can't be the case for the entirety of the year sure health is a thing it's always a thing it's a thing for every fucking player both before him and after him in drafts but isaiah pacheco feels like the easiest fourth fifth round pick this year for a guy that will probably just back into 10 touchdowns and back into 40 50 receptions because he is just there and he is kind of the only guy there and he's way more talented than just being labeled the only guy there so i love mr pacheco i'm also a huge 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 fan i've got two players up on this list four i give you number five i would love for you to subscribe if you're enjoying the video thus far we put out three videos or I put out three videos like this per week we also do a live stream every Saturday underdog best ball stream uh, so you can turn notifications on once you subscribe to let you know when I go live and you can hang out and ask me any questions you have for the upcoming year we also do a couple group podcasts throughout the week so we're putting out content like five six seven days per week subscribe to the channel if you want to get fed that content like the big girl that you are all right DK Metcalf also a big girl all right DK is someone that gets me fucking really really hyper about this year okay i think there's a lot of positive for him going into this year uh there's no doubt about it he's been one of the most explosive like uh, electric players in the league for the last three four years since he was drafted in 2019 i believe the year was last year you know while statistics might not have led you to believe he can have a, a massive massive ceiling yards per out run versus man coverage last year it was tyree kill nico collins justin jefferson cd lamb dj moore aj brown deontay johnson and then dk metcalf like those are the elite wide receiver one high upside receivers okay and when i look at ryan grubb coming over to, to implement the offense that he led in washington last year with roma dunze and michael Penix, like dk could easily be the roma dunze they took shots downfield last year at a very 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 high rate and i expect that to be transferred over to this passing offense so i'm excited for the entire passing offense Here, here's a world a perfect scenario I, I like dk as a floor guy he's like people don't get excited about dk metcalf at the end of the third round the early fourth round because at this point they feel like they've seen his ceiling even though he went for like 1350 yards a couple of years ago they feel like you know they're getting a thousand yards 1100 yards out of him let's talk about this this scenario and i don't i don't I'm not saying that this is likely, 
But let's say Tyler Lockett is on the you know the downfall of his career. He went for uh, one of the lower yardage totals in, in a very long time last year. I think it was like 850. What if what if he really does kind of fall off and he, he drops from 850 down to like 650 and he's not the receiver that we were accustomed to? What if JSN is also just not the receiver that most people thought he was coming off of a very bad year? So what if we have just like two eh, mediocre type of receivers next to DK Metcalf in this pass-heavy offense? His ceiling is going to be hit. He's going to be very, 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 very good. So, again, not likely. It's probably somewhere on the spectrum of both of those things happening. But DK, I think, is both a very safe floor, high upside play this year. So he gets me fucking juiced up to draft. And the last player up on this list is not really a player, but it is the end of a tier. And I've talked a lot about the tight end so far in redraft this year. And I'm looking very clearly, and I don't think it's fair that I leave George Kittle out of this, but I have a a tier of five tight ends that I think should literally be like five picks in a row. Everybody's taking Sam Laporta really early. And then it's this like, you know, Kelsey, maybe McBride, uh, Mark Andrews, Kincaid, or a little bit later. Whichever of those five tight ends I can get last, if I am the dude who gets the fifth of that tier, if I'm the dude to sit in there at like the 508 and Kincaid drops to me or Mark Andrews drops to me or something like that, I'm so happy. Like I am, fantasy football can only make me so happy, but as happy as fantasy football can humanly make me, that is me at my peak of happiness during a, a draft in fantasy football. So very rarely is Kelsey the last of that tier. Actually, never. Laporte is never the last. Kelsey's never the last. McBride is really never the last either. Most of the time, this ends up being either Mark Andrews or Dalton Kincaid. So when I can get one of those two dudes as the fifth tight end in that tier, I feel so good about my team. I feel mwah, chef fucking kiss. All right. So that is the last player slash tier of guys that I absolutely love drafting this year in fantasy. We had A. Rich, we had A. Chan, we had Cooper Cup, Isaiah Pacheco, DK Metcalf, and whatever tight end is the last of the tight end. If I get them, if I'm that dude, if I'm him, then I'm pumped. All right, six of those players, love them. Let me know who you are overly zealous about, overly zesty about this year drafting. Don't care about the value. You just want them on your fucking team like these dudes on my teams, all right? That is it for today. Thank you for sticking around. I know it was a short video. I yap very quickly in this one. I Holy shit, sub 14 minutes. That might be a new goddamn record. But yes, if you like these quick, concise videos, hopefully value packed for y'all, give you something to think about, make sure you subscribe. Also turn the notification button on because we will be going live every Saturday going forward. All right. I love you. I'm out. Smoochies.